We've got ridiculous scenes this morning. All right, so we've got ridiculous scenes this morning. We might even go back just to show you guys the, uh, honestly, there's huge, huge, huge stingrays. Look at these guys, straight under. After a 2.30 morning start to get to our destination, this was a great way to start the day. If that's anything to go by, today's going to be an insane, insane trip. Let's get it. We've got Diver Mom back with us and we're going for our first um, proper, proper adventure out on a ski to an island where we're going to anchor up and spearfish. Let's get it. So we head on out. Unfortunately, I got a bit of sunscreen on the camera, so things are looking a bit blurry, but don't worry. Once a wave hits, it sorts itself out. Super excited today. The conditions are looking absolutely stellar and we've been wanting to do this for a while on the ski. So we're just suiting up, getting ready to get in. Mon, you excited? Yes. It looks like we've got stellar conditions. Just awesome to be in the water, Easter weekend and crazy conditions. Let's get it. So we hop on into the water. I have dove this place before and it's just as stunning as I remember. I got really, really lucky with conditions on the last time as well but we discover ourselves a little seal straight away. I do decide to have a little look for some craze, but very unlikely given how many seals are about. This really friendly stingray comes up to say hello. And the reason why this guy is probably so friendly is because if there's tour guides that come through here and they probably feed him, so he probably affiliates humans with food. How cool are all these seals just coming in, being super playful, being inquisitive doing spins I always find if seals are just kind of chilling and not really in the mood um, just keep your distance from them and let them be but when they're like this swimming up to you if you put a spin on it's kind of like an indicator to play and they will just yeah follow you around do spins around you they're really really fun which is a massive contrast to if you come here when it's breeding season and when there's young pups around um, you'll get lots of bubbles blown at you by big angry bull seals. After a quick little play with the seals it's back to spearfishing and look at these black drummer just chilling. There's a couple that are nice legal good size but I won't bother taking any pass them up. Um, I'm on the hunt for either a big blue moe, a snapper or maybe even a kingfish. And whilst hanging out here, checking through the gap, I can see a turtle just making an appearance. So I decided to swim around and check him out. So this guy's a loggerhead turtle, which is awesome to see here and actually a first for this region for me. And honestly, just watching them slowly cruise off into the distance is one of the coolest things. They are so chilled and just awesome. As you can see, there's plenty of fish life down here. We've got more black drummer. We've got some blue moeys in the distance. And then we cut back to more seals. There are just so many seals here. You can smell them. You can hear them at all times. They're really, really cool. And here's Mon having a little dive with the seals, doing some fun spins with them, and this guy decides to stop and have a little scratch, which is pretty cool. <laughs> He's having an underwater scratch. Given how fishy it is, I'm gonna hold off. There's a couple of legal blue moeys in and amongst these guys. Not massive though, so we will lay off them and just enjoy being surrounded by about 25 blue moorwong, which is pretty cool um, doesn't happen every day that's for sure we're looking out onto that deeper ledge I'm still just fascinated with the clarity and yeah, just how many blue moes there are until this boat decides to hoon straight past and I could hear him underwater it's a bit painful coming up to that sound it always makes you a bit nervous but Thankfully, he didn't go directly over the top of me, but he was only about 15 meters away from me, which was about 10 meters away from the jet ski. Um, so yeah, not adhering to the, the regulations, the dive flags flying quite proud, and he just chose to hoon past. 
I saw you almost got hit by a bug. Yeah, even though we got the dive flag up, it went through awesome. We decided to do a little tour around the terrain, check out, I tried going through this, but it's not actually a pass through to the other side. So we continue on until we get to this beautifully flat protected area out of the way of the wind and the swell. And it seems like the perfect place to just drop anchor and yeah, grab a bite to eat for lunch. So we are officially anchored and we are ready for some lunch. It's been a busy, busy day. Just the ski, doing its thing, staying off the rock, being a good girl for once, not a naughty girl. And we got some sangers for lunch. Not a bad spot at all. Now with today's weather, I probably could have launched the drone from the ski, but the fact that we were anchored up for lunch just seemed like the perfect opportunity to and yeah i'm really glad i did these sites are incredible having the drone and taking these shots actually helps me find reef and areas that i want to dive particularly on the day you can even see fish from the surface it's a really cool tool but how cool are all these seals baby pups just playing in the water chilling out doing what seals do just being lazy All right, so we might as well celebrate. Um, we've had a few things happen, which are, are good. The wet mammal and the jet ski story of Naughty Gal. So we've had our first successful lunch. Yes, we did. We had sandwiches and we didn't sink the jet ski. Jet ski didn't fly away. It was okay. <laughs> <laughs> which honestly for us, that's like, yeah, it's amazing. So the jet ski hasn't sunk. The anchor didn't slip and just blow away on us. And I managed to pop the drone up, so hopefully you guys appreciated that as cool, cool sights. I don't want you guys to worry about how close I got to the seals. I've got seven times zoom on this drone, um, and yeah, the zoom's amazing. So um, yeah, just fly and zoom. It looks like I'm close, but I'm not close. Sticking to the regs and not getting myself in trouble posting online content that's gonna bite me in the ass. So anyways, um, the tide is going out, and we're cautious that we came in and it was like, 0.9 meters so we don't really want to lose that and hit a rock on the way out so it's back to we haven't shot anything yet we've seen some shootables we've seen some black drummer we've seen some blue moes some red moes um and i think i saw a, a nice size trevally but we haven't got anything yet been a bit picky but we need to get some dinner so let's get dinner and let's get rocking let's launch her rocket <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is awkward. We're about to make our way out. It's time to go. Let's get it. Snack some fish. With lunch firmly in our bellies, it's time to head out and get a fish. Although we've had a sensational dive so far, we've still got no fish in the esky. So let's putt putt out and um, see what we can get. I'm still being a bit picky in my mind. Mon and I have had a chat and I'm really thinking that we're going to come on to either a kingy or a snapper on this dive, just how fishy it is. We then stumble across all this bait and it's just busting up on the surface. Something's going on, either the bait's feeding or something's occasionally smashing it. I decide to hop in and find out. Again, really treated for the amount of bait and life that's around. You can see hundreds, if not thousands, of urchins. It's a pretty special spot, to be honest. Loving the colour as the sun hits the weed. It's just magic. Really, really nice diving. I move on to a patch of current, and the current kind of just drifts me through. And the whole way along this current line, there's just so much bait. It's awesome. 
The bait isn't super timid, which doesn't give a great indicator that they are being smashed by predators, but in places the bait does move a bit quicker, especially when I'm down on the bottom or down swimming around. So that's an indicator that there might be some predatory fish, and sure enough it doesn't take too long for these three big kings to come through. Line her up, got an okay shot, get some bad recoil as the spear leaves the gun. And what's actually happened is a couple weeks ago I broke the line release of the gun and I've tried a dodgy repair by myself to fix the line release and it just hasn't quite managed to, to fix it. So when I've shot the gun, the line has slipped off the release, but the second section of line gun. is caught on the release and yeah, basically acts as a break and just stops the spear going out on the, its true direction and also traveling as far as it could. So that was a bit disappointing. End, but thankfully I've got my main aim right roller gun loved and trusted 85 roller this thing is an absolute beast and it can definitely punch through fish like that bro like three kingfish like 15 kilos and it can definitely punch through those kings yeah, I just took a shot point blank so get it all loaded up and stumble across these grey nurse sharks. You can see them down the bottom. With this many grey nurse sharks completely outnumbering me, um, I think in the end we count about 21 grey nurse sharks in this spot. I found like 12 grey nurse underneath me. I didn't want to get down too low and close to them because if they are out in the open, they are moving around a little bit. When they're a bit more active like this, definitely want to be keeping distance from them because if they are Jekyll and Hyde they can just flip the switch and yeah go crazy so really really cool to see though um, good healthy number of stock considering these guys are declared as critically endangered um, yeah great to see that many in a single spot After we get past the grey nurse sharks, we do a reset and I basically end up in the same current line and the plan is to just dive down throughout the current and try and hit on to where those kingies were. The current is absolutely pumping and yeah, you don't have to do much except for I just have my band snap. And I'm convinced this could only ever happen to me. I've had one of my guns fail already because I didn't fix the line release properly. And then I load up my trusty old gun, which the bands are like a year and a half old on. And for some reason, one of the bands decides to slip from the bridle. I cannot believe it. What are the odds that 10 minutes after getting it into the water and having probably close to 100, 200, 300 hours on the gun. One of the bands have snapped. But I don't let that hold me off. I decide to try and continue on. This is the only option that I've got right now. So let's see if we can find fish and shoot it on one band. I just had a fucking one band of the really snap. cool things about having the bridle set up the way I do, um, if one band does snap, you are still able to load the gun and shoot the spear. Mm -hmm. It's just very slow in comparison. You've got half the power moving through the spear, um, so you need to get close to your target and you don't want to shoot anything too big, otherwise it won't go through because it's lacking that power. But I am very determined to get a fish on board, and they were really healthy sized kings, so... We might as well try for one, right? I've got one band loaded. Um, it is my trusty gun. I don't tend to miss with this sucker, so let's just see what we can get. I do a couple of dives down, do some grunts, and basically try and bring in the kings. This is roughly where I saw them last time. So I go up. There's no indicator that they could be there. Um, they can move on, but look what we find. Hello, Mr. Kingfish. Now, I'm gonna need to get a lot closer than this to take the shot on the fish because of I've only got one band and I don't just want to shoot the fish, poke it, injure it and have it rip off. I want to actually make sure my spear goes through the whole fish and that I'm not just going to needlessly harm an animal. I'm really conscious these days of just trying to take shots when I've got good shots 
And if I don't have a good shot, don't just kind of hail mary it and and hit and hope, because of yeah, it's not worth it when you just injure a fish for nothing. So. These guys aren't coming close and it is the most torturous thing. I'm trying to like turn away from them, turn back on myself, dive down, but they're not having any of it. It's so frustrating knowing that if the other gun would work or if that gun just had two bands, I would have been able to have taken the shot and um, smack myself a really nice fish. The kingfish kind of disappear off, but we continue on this current line because if there could be more, um, who knows worth worth a try if you don't try you don't know so same deal again get on top of the reef and just make some grunting noises try and bring in the kingfish they're obviously curious to the noises i made last time so we've got to do a quick little on the job fix my bands are sealed so um, thank god i've got a ratchet screwdriver and i can remove my bands from the gun well, let me tell you, we're getting that king here. 100%. And another reason um, why you should always carry a toolkit on you is you never know when you're going to need it. Now, in the time it's taken me to swap the bands on the guns, the current's dropped right off, which is a shame because of it's going to impact how things go. But there's still plenty of bait around, as you can see. I've just got to force the line I drifted through last time. And we get the new bands loaded up. Everything fits and works perfectly, as you'd expect. If we see the kingfish this time, we're gonna smack one. The visibility has started to tweak off a little bit as well. And I don't know if that's because of the wind directions changed or the swell directions changed or what, but it's definitely noticeably worse than it was before. The viz dropping off can actually be of benefit, although it means it's harder for us to see. It tends to bring fish in closer because they have to get closer to suss you out. So we can see just swimming through, trying to force this current line and the ground that I'm encountering is different to before. So I know that I'm not exactly on the mark that I was before, but it's hard without that current just drifting me through. Um, yeah, it's hard to know exactly which way to kind of swim. I've got a general direction, but if I'm 40 meters out, I might miss them. We do a drift and yeah, nothing's coming up. I'm trying all the tactics, turning around, hiding my eyes, making some grunting noises. I don't have a flasher today, but um, it's not working, whatever I'm doing. Can't seem to see them. I did see some juvenile snapper on these dives, but they were probably just under legal, so not even worth a mention, really, but cool to see. At this point, it's getting a bit painful. There's less and less fish as I drift through, so we do a reset, go back to the beginning, and kind of start again. There's a few fish hanging around here, but nothing to shoot, no real target. And it is getting late now, so it's running through my mind. Do I even bother with a kingfish? Like, do I just go for a blue moe, a black drummer, or something like that? And in my head, all I can think is that if I pull the trigger on a different fish, like a black drummer, I'm gonna have the kingies come in and buzz me. And yeah, I should have just waited for what I wanted. So we do another drift dive. And again, yeah, without that current, um, I somehow managed to end up in a different spot with Grey Nurse Shark. This guy's on his own, um, but yeah, it's just getting a bit murkier, a bit darker, and the day is pushing on. We've had a massive day in the water. At this stage, I've been awake for like 15 hours, and definitely starting to fatigue and tire. So we try and find the current line. We get back onto it, and we do find where all the fish are. They haven't moved. I'm just not able to locate the fish as easy as I once was. But we decide to give it one more drift. Mon's on the ski. She got cold quite early, so she's not having the greatest time just up there chilling, being hit by a bit of wind now, so. So this is my last opportunity to make something happen. Come on, kingies, be on my side. I feel like I've got some Poseidon points up my sleeve and, and I might just cash those tokens in. I think I stumble back onto the ground of the original kingfish sightings, but there's just no kingfish to be seen, and this is frustrating. I think I'm about to call myself on a blank dive and actually have a blank dive. It's rare that it happens, 
But you know what? Maybe I was too picky at the start and I should have taken Sometimes fish straight off the bat. Sometimes you get distracted going One for other species. Drummer, it's best just to target yeah, something. And I don't know if I've been too greedy here or just incredibly unlucky here with my spear guns. There's just not much around. There's a couple of blue moeys, but they're barely legal. So I don't want to take the risk on those. And some bonnies come in at the end, and I definitely would have taken one, but they just didn't have anything to do with me. I'm not swimming at them, like, particularly fast, but there isn't any current, so I do have to swim to get them to come by, and they just swim off into the distance. With that, decide to call it a day, and you know what? Still had an incredible day out on the water, but it's time to go home. Get some rest, because of weird diving solid tomorrow. Um, and it actually turns out to be a pretty special day and um, the next day so stay tuned for the next episode a massive thank you for watching and if you have enjoyed this please hit the like button wet mammal channel is back in full force we've got like at least six episodes lined up until next time stay wet stay fed catch ya with that. Wah, give me a kiss.